I'm not going to go over Dr. Jerome Corsi's bio, but he's done some of the top banking analysis and projects in the world. Been friends with Donald Trump for 40 years. Uh, has had three number one New York Times bestselling books uh, that have decided two elections. They admit, like the Swift voting, uh, which was the truth against uh, Kerry. And he's WND.com. I'm not going to go over his Harvard University, top of his class, 1972, uh, expert in political violence and terrorism, advisor of the State Department and other agencies and all of their classified work. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you think he's famous for politics, he's more famous for banking. So today, while he's with us for much of the hour, I want to cover a lot of different issues. I want to cover the debate last night, what he thinks of Creepy Kane. I want to cover what he thinks in the next 33 days we should be doing to make sure Trump gets in. What does he think of the announcement that the OECD's paramilitary arm is going to be overseeing the election with 10 times the, quote, EU moderators uh, and overseers they've ever seen? Uh, what does he make of the U.N. trying to accelerate their climate treaty, claiming they don't care what Congress does as long as Obama agrees it's going to be ratified? I believe that's unlawful. We'll get his expert analysis. Uh, but obviously the reason he's coming on is a big exclusive at WorldNet Daily uh, of massive atrocities committed when Hillary wanted Libya to be a failed state. It's been confirmed that Gaddafi was ready to give up unconditionally after he was premeditatedly attacked. And still they wanted a failed state. So this just shows what a monster Hillary is. Uh, he's got that report at WND.com. See Hillary's Libyan jihad atrocities. Now I want to warn you, we have these videos too from the same source, but they gave it to us after they were going to go with it, which is fine. We get so many data dumps, we can't even cover it all. We're all on the same team. Uh, we're going to play some of these probably today, but probably not put them on YouTube. I mean, this is Al-Qaeda slash Wahhabist ISIS chopping innocent people's heads off, murdering children, uh, mass graves, you name it. I mean, this is a big story. It's at WND.com. It dovetails with our big exclusive that comes out of the same data dump. Hillary killed Libya peace deal over personal vendetta. On Monday, we have the former head of the Black Caucus coming on who was there and met with Gaddafi more than 20 times. And he was saying, look, I'll just go. Don't give the country over to ISIS, Al-Qaeda, at the time. I will just leave. Just just don't kill all the ethnic minorities, the black tribes, and others that the racist uh, Arabs, when they think don't think blacks are humans, folks, they kill them. So this is a giant, giant sc scandal. Uh, so we can cover this in any order, Dr. Corsi. Uh, wants to, uh, so, I mean, look at the Hill. This sounds like something, of course, he'd write 15 years ago at World Net Daily. UN makes power play against Trump. Uh, we've got openly the Washington Post saying reparation for blacks in America. The UN runs strong cities, federalizing police with the Justice Department. George Soros is openly trying to create a race war. We get his emails that are hacked by DC leaks. It confirms it all. I mean, this is, put it to you this way. I sounded nuts 20 years ago. Of course he didn't because he had so many degrees and background. He wouldn't even go as far as I do, but you know, he'd get attacked. Uh, you know, Lou Dobbs, all of us have been vindicated. Matt Drudge, you name it, Joseph Farah. Now, though, it's like surreal because it's crazier than I even thought. So I'm almost left behind now some days where things are so crazy. I'm like, I knew she was selling out U.S. interest, but I didn't know she was brokering for the Chinese president against Chinese interest. I mean... It's like levels worse than I thought. So where do you want to start with the debate, with the election, with um, the U.N. takeover, with the atrocities, uh, with Hillary's health? I mean, Dr. Corsi, where should we begin? Where should we start? Let's start with Libya. I mean, I think the Libya is really important. Uh, we're running complementary stories. I mean, your your story on the abdication and the uh, inside that you've got that. There were major initiatives made, and Gaddafi was willing to step down. Uh, I've reported this as well with a couple of other efforts. Uh, Admiral Kubik and AFRICOM had an effort going. Congressman Kurt Weldon had an, had an issue going to try to get Gaddafi to abdicate. Uh, this, uh, you got... I because believe, you don't want to turn the country over to al-Qaeda. Right, exactly. And I mean, look, <laughs> and, and it was a peaceful transition. Gaddafi was cooperating with the Obama administration. Gaddafi was holding Libya together. Sure, I'm not even against overthrowing their military if you put something better in, but no, we put something 10 times worse in on purpose. And it's a document that Hillary switched sides. She supported al-Qaeda. We were bringing in weapons through Ambassador Stevens that ultimately ended up in Syria with the radicals. The Foreign mercenaries and foreign. I want you to back up. I'm going to shut up for five minutes and give you the floor. Start over. 
This is on record now. This is what Benghazi, this is the key to Benghazi. You're about to break it. You have the exclusive documents. She literally switched sides, double dealing. It's clear. So did Obama. Let's break it down for people. This is huge. Well, it, it, the Chris Stevens' mission in Benghazi was running guns. We were running guns with Hillary Clinton doing it. And by the way, that was confirmed again even yesterday when this uh, arms dealer, Mark Turry, uh, was uh, the Department of Justice just declined to prosecute him. Now, Mark Turry had the goods, as do I. I've interviewed Mark Turry. I've interviewed his lawyer. Uh, Hillary was planning to run gun deals and was running gun deals into Libya illegally and lying to the American people. Turry had the inside on it, and they prosecuted Turry over a gun running operation to Libya that he didn't actually complete because Hillary stepped in and blocked it. But the whole purpose of this Benghazi compound was for Hillary to, to provide arms to the Al-Qaeda terrorists and militants, largely foreigners coming into Libya, who were going to disrupt the country. And what we published now on WND is a series of the first three, of all, we have as many as 25 videos right now. Some of them are so horrific, we're debating publishing them. But these show... Uh, violence in Gaddafi, in Benghazi prior to 9-11, with a government official being dragged out of a building and viciously stabbed to death by the mob, uh, shouting Allah Akbar, etc. This is a, again, a not a peaceful demonstration by any means. Uh, and there's two videos of Libyan soldiers who have been, Gaddafi's troops, who have been apprehended by the Al-Qaeda terrorists, foreigners brought into the country by Hillary Clinton. One of them is just horrific. It's a sodomized, the a Libyan troop is on the ground, spread eagled, uh, naked, half naked, being sodomized with a rifle and saying he doesn't knowing and, and knowing. And now I should add, they're calling for the same tactics in the West. ISIS, which is the same group, is calling for this here. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yes. In fact, this is the entire ISIS whole approach. And we're, again... Uh, backing ISIS, even in this, with Assad, this has been part of the, the weapons that ultimately, after the Megazi terror attack, went over to Syria. And we, again, were providing access through Turkey and through the Middle East for these weapons to get to Syria. And we've been on the wrong side of supporting Muslim Brotherhood, supporting... And that's Wahhabi. my next question. What is the master game? It's confirmed, uh, Obama, that you broke. Well, years later, it came out in the mainstream news. Right running the Muslim Brotherhood, hundreds of millions out of Kenya, overthrowing Egypt, our ally. It's so bold, but it's now confirmed. What was the master plan? How has it gone for them? Well, the master plan, I think, was to destabilize the Middle East in favor of the Muslim Brotherhood. I think the Obama administration's been Muslim Brotherhood affiliated almost from the beginning. Huma Abedin, number two aide to Hillary Clinton, you know, is, is clearly affiliated through her parents with the Muslim Brotherhood. And I published, you know, two thirds of the emails that Huma Abedin got. And she was the go between with the State Department and the Clinton Foundation and Teneo. Uh, Huma Abedin was posting on a Yahoo.com personal email account. She could have given the password and the username to anyone in the world. They could have read unredacted State Department emails. Sure. So this is how they're passing the intelligence on. Yeah, and this is clearly a crime. This is clearly a violation of all the federal statutes excused by the Department of Justice. But it, it looks to, is to me an obvious sign of espionage. And Which sets a precedent for inside espionage operations to carry this out. And let's expand on that now. If you look at what al-Qaeda and ISIS are doing, Egypt knows this, was able to overthrow the, the Muslim Brotherhood Wahhabist takeover suddenly allied with Russia, which they hadn't done in 40-something years. But we now know because of a covert alliance with the U.S. military, Russia and Egypt to clean things up. Cy Hirsch has broke that. You've broken that. This is an epic story of patriots in our government actually countermanding what Obama did. Uh, what can you say about that from your sources? Well, in fact, I published in WND we had you know, Muslim Brotherhood walking into our embassy in Tripoli getting paid off by the Obama administration. These were the same Muslim Brotherhood that ultimately some of them were prosecuted under LCC in Egypt for being terrorists. It's absolutely clear. And these videos should leave no doubt. I mean, they're horrific. And uh, in, this week we'll publish some videos of beheadings. We're going to publish a, uh, a horrific video of a cab driver who was beheaded by these 
Al Qaeda and other foreign mercenaries. And, 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 and let me just stop you. We've got the videos too, but we're letting you go with them. But we're going to go ahead and play for viewer discretion advised for TV viewers with, without audio or limited audio behind while you talk. I'm going to skip this network break to give you more time. We're going to be playing some of the videos you mentioned. Again, this is a, this is government officials being sodomized with rifles. This is p children being killed. This is horrible stuff. But you have you need to know what Hillary and Obama did to bring their jihadis in to take over North Africa and the Middle East. So the viewer discretion is advised. We're airing this. Right now, viewer expression is advised. Please continue, Dr. Corsi. Well, and you've got to remember, too, that these Libyan tribes that are providing us a lot of this information, and uh, Alex, I can confirm that we're dealing with very legitimate sources. You have information. We have information from the same sources, highly authenticated. The tribes that Hillary Clinton brutalized in Libya are black tribes. These are black tribes that have been racially discriminated for a long time in Libya. And, and the mercenaries, the foreigners that Hillary brought in to destabilize Libya went against these tribes and against women. There are thousands of women. How about the war on women? And, we're, uh, and I want to get to that. I think Hillary's weakest spot with Emma Abedin and her mother that promotes sexual mutilation. But we're, we're showing giant piles of dead black people that racist yes. Wahhabists have killed. That's it. These are, these are killed these are soldiers that were faithful to Gaddafi. If you're black, you're killed. Let's explain this under Wahhabism. It's, yeah, that's the point, is that these tribes who are black in Libya are targeted by the Al-Qaeda militia and the Ansar al-Sharia and the other mercenaries that Hillary brought in to destabilize Libya. And the black tribes are targeted. They're going to be killed. Uh, they are being killed. Their women are imprisoned. Uh, their children are imprisoned. Thousands. Uh, the women are no longer free. They're wearing habibs and they're wearing, you know, the, the uh, various forms of burqas. They're not able to be educated or, or, or be involved in professions again. Uh, young women are being sold into sex slavery from the tribes in Libya. Yes, these are other, you know, this, this is a film where the prisoners of Libya are actually being forced to be, they eat human flesh. They're being cannibalized right here. In this video you're showing right Which, now. Which, by the way, Putin pointed out they, they eat hearts. There's video of this. They're obsessed yeah. with sodomy, raping children, eating hearts. Why do, why, do, why do the Saudi Arabian death cult, why are they into this? It's bizarre. I mean, the whole thing is bizarre. This is a form of Islam that is completely uh, satanic. I mean, this is uh, violent. Yeah, for TV viewers, there's giant <laughs> tables chopping up dead humans, and then they yeah. make them as an initiation to not be killed, eat human flesh. That's right. These are Libyan soldiers faithful to Gaddafi that are captured. And these are uh, terrorist mercenaries largely brought in by Hillary Clinton, destabilizing Libya. And they're meat, making them eat human flesh of other... There you go, right there. That's an example of it. Uh, this is part of the ritual. Uh, probably, most likely, these prisoners were later killed. Uh, because some of the videos that we have is shown as well are... That's right. And, 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 and in fact, I, I, I misspoke. A lot of times they do this because they believe it then sends them to hell that they made them eat human yes. flesh. Exactly. And then they're shot in the back of the head. This is part of the ritual to make sure their souls are lost in everlasting hell. This is a demonizing that the terrorists are doing to Muslims. These are all Muslims. This is violence. So these Muslims them. are desecrating these people to hoping they go yes. to hell. Precisely. You know, you know, the Wahhabists are so evil and so ridiculous. I've never seen anyone act this evil. Not even top serial killers act or behave like this. What is wrong with these people? Well, and the Wahhabism is Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia has been exporting Wahhabism for 40 or 50 years. While we have Republicans and Democrats alike, you know, fond friends of the Bushes. This is a Democratic and Republican problem. As well as the Clintons with Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood owes its origin back to the Mufti in Jerusalem in the 1930s was affiliated with Hitler. Adolf Hitler in World War II. Well, he this saluted him. He was he actually fought for him. Well, I mean, that's why the, the Nazis invaded North Africa. Let's expand on that, right. Dr. Jerome Corsi, breaking all this, WND.com. Dr. Corsi, then let me ask you this question. Again, the end game. How is it going these, for Hillary and Obama? Uh, these these and, are the bombings that were being done in Libya on civilians by NATO. NATO, see, remember, Gaddafi was willing to step down peacefully. None of this war was necessary. There was no reason. And instead, NATO used high-tech cluster bombs and weapons to wipe out the infrastructure and to back the jihad armies so they could rape women, put burqas on them, kill them, uh, kill Gaddafi, uh, make people eat human flesh, kill tens of thousands. Some of the numbers are over 100,000. Uh, I mean, this is insanity. So we're showing you the loving liberal Hillary who said she came, she saw, he died. We should cue that up.
again, as we narrate this, most of the audience's radio, we're showing these exclusive videos uh, that we got from a clandestine source. Let me ask you this then, what is the end game? How did it go for Hillary though? Well, I think, you know, this is becoming, American people are becoming increasingly aware of this and it's headline news that this Mark Turry, the, the you know, armed deal, arms dealer was not gonna be prosecuted by the Department of Justice. I've seen the files, I've talked to his lawyer. He had the goods to show that the arms dealing he was doing had been authorized by Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton wanted to set him up and blame him, Mark Turi, because there was a shipment of arms that was interdicted in Libya. And the Libyan government displayed these with Qatar stamps and said, this is Hillary Clinton shipping in weapons to the Al Ansar al-Sharia and al-Qaeda to destabilize Libya. This is what Hillary did. She made a conscious decision to back the most serious terrorist groups in Libya to, de to, oppo to depose Gaddafi when he was willing to peacefully step down. And the violence was directed against the tribes, largely the black tribes. And it was vicious against women. Remember, the women who are in prison were gonna be abused in prison, even if they're let go. These Muslim tribes won't accept them back again because they're going to consider them defiled. So it's a permanent you know, ruining of a human being, which Hillary Clinton is doing to the women in Gaddafi, you know, smiling, laughing, lying about it, when, and, and claiming that she is the you know, great secretary of state who you know, achieved peaceful purposes. And it's all nonsense. Obama and Hillary Clinton, and Hillary Clinton made the key policy decisions here, destabilized all of North Africa, Libya. Uh, they destabilized Egypt, Morsi. And by the way, none of this is rhetoric. I mean, you literally, and I'm not kissing your butt, Dr. Jerome Corsi of WND.com, I'd say broke 50% of the news with thousands of reporters on this, because he has all the sources in the Middle East where he worked for decades. The rest was Cy Hirsch and InfoWars and hundreds and hundreds of other reporters, but you are the expert and you never exaggerate what I love. In fact, you kind of dial it back, but, but I, want, I want new listeners to understand, we're, th this isn't political season, so we're saying this, this is all coming out. This is how evil they are. Our government going out of its way under Obama and Hillary to back the Muslim Brotherhood Wahhabias, to back Al Qaeda, to back ISIS. The Russians are right, Trump's right, she is the founder, Obama's the co-founder, and the good news is it's getting rolled up and defeated because our own military wouldn't go along with it. But correct me if I'm wrong, suddenly they fired so many generals, they finally found groups that will be the Air Force and, 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 and you know, bomb the Syrian military and the Russians. That's why the Russians are so angry. And now we have the head of the army and we have the head of the Joint Chiefs saying, we've been asked to start a war with Russia to fire cruise missiles on Russian aircraft. That will go to war with Russia. Am I authorized to do that? You know, that's what happened two weeks ago in Congress. We have new clips today. So you've got the sources. I've got the sources. Uh, I, I mean, it, it looks like Obama and Hillary are actually trying to push a, a conflict as an October surprise. Or am I wrong, Dr. Corsi? Well, I'm, I'm beginning to suspect that. I mean, I think the military is objecting to going to war with Russia, although the Obama administration seems to be pushing in that direction. Exactly. Let's be clear. When the head of the Army and the Joint Chiefs comes out and say, you want war with Russia, you need to get authorization. They're not calling for it. They're raising the alarm. They're raising the alarm. They don't want to go to war with Russia over Assad. This is not, you know, Russia is supporting Assad. They're going to defeat ISIS. We want to again support ISIS. And Russia they, says then they'll make Assad step down, which I believe. Well, they probably will. I mean, this is the, the issue here is that we're not on the good side of it. We're not, you know, Black Lives Matter unless you're a Libyan tribes. That's the point we've got to get across. Or unless you're, you're the illegitimate son of, of, of Bill Clinton. Unless you're Danny Williams, then black lives don't matter either. You know, the point is... But I'm asking you as, a, as an anthropologist, a sociologist, and you know, intelligence researcher, I mean, a smart guy, why would Soros and Obama and Hillary ally themselves with the scum of the earth just because Saudi Arabian money? I mean, why? It's just so evil. Well, it's, it makes no sense to go to war except that the... I think the uh, Obamas and Clintons are realizing that Hillary is going to lose. Uh, this is um, the first recognition that they've had. They're not fooling the American people. Trump's crowds are enormous. Hillary's are very small. Kane was atrocious in the debate last night. It was one of the worst performances by a vice presidential candidate I've ever seen in my life. I think Kane did even worse than Nixon, and I never thought no one, anyone could do worse than Nixon in 1960. Kane did. Uh, the uh, Hillary is now, I think, being exposed on Libya. If Obama thinks the solution is to go to war with Russia over Syria, 
I think he's got another thing coming. The American people do not want a war with Russia. Sure, and that and fits into this whole narrative that if you don't want war with Russia or, or you're for WikiLeaks, you're a Russian agent. I mean, that's not going to fly. Or that, you know, that I'm publishing, I published one article already. I'm going to do another one, hopefully tomorrow, uh, linking the Clinton Foundation into Russian money laundering. That they're money laundering on behalf of the same issues, interest in Russia, they cornered our uranium market. They got the Clintons and Obama to do massive technology. Sure, transfers. that's the thing. Our Everything they accuse Trump of is what they've done in triple. They've done it. And in the, the money laundering, it's not Trump's ties to Russia are minimal. I mean, the Clinton Foundation is is neck deep in money laundering. I'm talking about money laundering, you know, that shows up in the Panama. And by the thing. way, you're a world expert on money laundering. People don't yes, know that. I exposed the HSBC money laundering scandal was first. If I hadn't written about it, I'm sure they would never have gotten the one point nine billion dollar fine that HSBC got. And by the way, the cover up artists in that were a uh, Comey of the FBI. Who sure. Was well, let's talk Comey then and, and the FBI turning against him. Rightfully so. They need to redeem themselves or the, there's no credibility of the, of the federal in, 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 you know, bureau. And, and then how that ties into the foundation, where you see that going and more straight ahead with Dr. Corsi. You know, we don't hype things up. We've got so much hardcore news, like the exclusive we had yesterday with Obama, talking about how bad white people are in Kenya in the 1990s. We've got so much going on that we don't need to hype stuff. When I tell you that Dr. Corsi's got articles at WND.com that are so key, that we've got articles exposing women being enslaved, mass murdered by the people Hillary put in charge, we have the footage. And this needs to get out to everybody so that folks can make a decision about who they're really going to support. You can say what you want about the Republicans. They haven't been perfect. But under Hillary and Obama, they've done stuff that's so crazy, I can't even believe it. See Hillary's Libyan jihad atrocities. To understand how they'll go out of their way to go after Christians, you name it. Now, before I go any further, Leanne McAdoo's here. We have a new Hillary Don't Tread on Me shirt that's limited edition that, just like the Hillary for Prison shirt, is only going to be sold for the next 33 days. Now, we've been selling the Hillary for Prison shirt for over a year. Over 100,000 of those have been sold. That helps fund the operation, but most of them we sold at cost, so it didn't really help fund the operation. This is a Made in America shirt. It's the Liberty Snake, the, the Gadsden Snake, curled up around Hillary, <laughs> saying, don't tread on me, Infowars.com, on the right shoulder. Let's show sh folks the back and what the back of the shirt shows. Hillary, 2016, lock her up. Lock her up. Infowars.com. Now, I'm going to explain something. Only 3,000 of these were printed. We're going to start coming out with a lot of limited editions where there's only two or 3,000 of them. This is a limited edition. We have it all sizes right now. It's really soft fabric. Very Leanne, what do you soft. think of the shirt? It's really great. It's very comfortable, very soft fabric, made in America. And ladies, we heard you. This is made for women. It's already got the good shape, so it you know fits properly on the chest area. It's not made for men. Uh, but it's super soft, really nice fabric, made in America. Don't tread on me. And it's great for men, too. It's yeah. unisex, but you're right. Yeah. We, you know, we've well, gone with this, not just cotton, it's this, it's this mix. It's really comfortable. Well, it really feels great. Both. It's made in America. It comes for both men and women, and that's key. A lot of guys don't realize, you know. But the men get the soft fabric, Women are too. shaped a little bit differently than men, so, you know. And, and we got the Molon Lambe gold foil version for women as well. Uh, that, too, made in America. Infowarsstore.com, yes. Infowarslife.com. We have the new Biome Defense Probiotic is in. And we've got 23% off on DNA Force. With the bio uh, CoQ10, the bio PQQ, you name it. That is an amazing nutraceutical grade product for about, I don't know, probably 300% lower than what it's sold at medical offices. Very similar formulas. We're going out and getting the Rolls Royce stuff that medical clinics sell because people will only, again, pay for something that's that quality with the medical clinic. We're cutting out all the, you know, 400, 500% profit and only, you know, putting 100% markup on it and dominating the market with DNA force that third party sites uh, say is incredible, backed by 175 clinical studies, nerve growth factor, <laughs> energize, and more. Just the bio PQQ comes from Mitsubishi America. Nobody else, ladies and gentlemen, has got it. They've got synthetic bio PQQs. Our CoQ10, again, is not synthetic. And it goes on and on. DNA Force from InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. But Leanne, again, the new Don't Tread on Me shirt. Uh, there are, I think they said 2,500 of these or something. I was two, 3,000, whatever. Limited run. This is a real. limited run. <laughs> We're having lots of limited edition shirts. This is it. And your purchase supports the broadcast. So I got to tell you, 
That's why Trump says, hey, make better deals so I can make clothes in America. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, I can buy this same shirt, you know, in Honduras for $3. For here, it's like $10 a piece, and I sell it for $22. But uh, again, just to get it made in America, this quality fabric, these shirts cost us just the, just the shirt $10 a piece. The printing's like 2 bucks. So this is a high-quality shirt that should be like 30 40 bucks at a designer's store. Hillary, 2016, lock her up on the back. Don't tread on me on the front. Limited edition. Leanne Mackett, any other comments? Well, I think this is great because we were actually just uh, talking back in the room about dating during this political time. It's, you know, very divisive. And, you know, do you want to bring up politics on your dates? I think it's super important to find out who the person you're going to date is uh, voting for. And, you know, you could have the pick of the litter at the SJW party, but, you know, it, it takes a rare woman to be able to say, yeah, I'm voting for Trump and I'm not afraid of it. So I think wearing a shirt like this just puts it out there that, hey, don't tread on me. I am clearly not with her. So wear it loud and proud, ladies. It's meant to find the patriots. It's meant to find exactly. who you don't want to associate with. Exactly. So you can just zero in on them. Enough with the Tinder and all of that. I heard you talking <laughs> during the break just how shocking these videos are and the fact that Hillary put Wahhabist in, uh, you know, Al-Qaeda, ISIS in Libya, who murder women, sell them into sex slavery. Hmm. I just can't see how women can support Hillary when she's like married to Uma Abedin, you know, uh, reportedly basically stays in the same hotel room. They're fine. I'm, not, I'm a libertarian. I'm not judging you. But her mother writes the journal that calls for the sexual mutilation of women and is the leading proponent of sexual mutilation uh, in the world. How the hell could any liberal woman vote for this the, 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 this crazy lady? No, it's very shocking. And it's just so, it, how do they continually sweep this type of stuff under the rug with the sex slavery, with the rapes, with the killing of gay people? You know, these are- uh, yeah, throwing them off roofs. That if it was anyone else, that, that they would take that person down with that type of history. But if you're a Clinton, it's fine, you get a pass. I mean, this is insane. Genital mutilation supporter, Huma Abedin's mother. She was, Huma was there at the journal at the time this is going on. She's a leading one. She, she defends yeah. it now. We're right. showing articles on Infowars.com, uh, on the free stream, Infowars.com forward slash show right now. Leanne, thank you so much. Great job last night covering the debate. Did, uh, did uh, the Governor Pence not clean the floor with Creepy Kane? Oh, my goodness. He t I really like Mike Pence now that I had the opportunity to just really yeah, sit down. Uh, that's and why Trump went with him. He's bait. really smart. And the Clinton campaign is so upset that he didn't take the bait. And they're saying, well, he couldn't defend all of Trump's statements that he made. It's like, no, he didn't take your canned bait. Trump could learn a lot. I'm not saying I know more than Trump, but I'm saying Pence. Pence is a master. He's also been meeting with our good friend Faraj that's coming back on soon. Nigel Faraj of UKIP, the leader, former leader. He's been advising him very exciting. Leanne, you'll be on the Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central, Infowars.com forward slash show. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Dr. Corsi, we've got about 40 minutes left. Again, I'm going to try to give you the floor, but you've got me so excited. I've been backing up the, you know, the different things you've been breaking down. We were getting into money laundering, the Clinton Foundation, how crazy this is, even the internal emails from the State Department with uh, Chelsea upset about them stealing you know, 94% of the money from the Haitians, Haitian leaders, the president of their Senate coming out saying they robbed them. All this stuff happening, 33 days left, uh, this Kane thing blew up in their face. Uh, you've got the floor. What should we be watching? What should we be looking at that you're covering at WND.com? Well, let's talk about the money laundering a bit and the Clinton Foundation. <clears throat> the... Um you know, Donald Trump is being hit because he uh, used a tax avoidance part of the code, a loss, uh, a loss carry forward, uh, not to pay taxes in subsequent years, which is completely legal. Now, the Clinton Foundation, I've got the documentation on this. I'm, uh, I'm uh, preparing for publication tomorrow and uh, probably in the next week. The uh, information I've just gotten from Germany, which outlines for me some of the um, never before seen back channels uh, through which the Clinton Foundation has been money laundering with Russia. There's, a lot of this money has gone to Podesta. A lot of that money is off the books of the Clinton Foundation. I mean, here, let's question how much of the offshore money laundering the Clinton Foundation does is uh, reported for tax purposes. I doubt any of it is reported for tax purposes. Uh, but the point is, this Rose Adam, which is the, the uh, Russian uh, energy uh, agency that bought into 20% of the U.S. uranium production through this Frank Justra in, in uh, Canada, who was a penny stock dealer from Vancouver, connected himself with the Clinton Foundation, has no, is also picked up not only in the Panama Papers, but in the uh, Swiss banking uh, revelations in terms of offshore money hiding. 
And um, I've got now the record of how the accounts passed money through the Clintons off the books. And Clinton's using this pass-through corporation, this WJC as initials, William Jefferson Clinton, WJC LLC, and his WJC investments as off-the-books pass-throughs, which is what money launderers use. The way a shell corporation pass-through works is the money goes into the account, and then within a few hours, it goes out of the account. So you, the account shows a zero balance. You don't know what the account has in it or where the money came from or necessarily where it went. This is the way it makes it hard to trace the money. And the Clinton Foundations have been using the this kind of secret pass-through. And again, if we really want to get into taxes, if if the uh, Clintons want to push the issue of you know, Donald Trump using a legitimate tax avoidance, it's completely legal. Uh, I think this is illegal activity where even, well, I've got evidence that uh, Podesta, who is her campaign manager, uh, did not report as he needed to various transactions that came to him from Russia through these various groups in Russia that wanted to do two things, control the uranium production in the United States and have Hillary Clinton, as part of this reset, reset transfer massive amounts of US military intelligence and technology to Russia, which Hillary Clinton did. You know, these I was about are, to say, I was told by a pretty high-level military source that, yeah, the Russians don't think Trump's out to get him, but they're not sure if they try to push him around. They're kind of scared of him. That the word is they kind of actually want Hillary because she's so blackmailed. Well, Hillary's completely compromised. Hillary, all the Russians have to do is reveal what the information I got through you know, authoritative sources from Germany, identifying the Russian banks through which these transfers occur. I'm going to... The articles I'm going to publish are going to chart it out so you can see the chart of how the money passes from here to here and here and ends up in the Clinton Foundation. Sure, you also brought up it. Comey. I mean, he, he does the tax returns for the Clintons. Well, he, Comey, the law firm that Comey's been associated with, and also Loretta Lynch and Cheryl Mills does the tax returns for the Clintons. Comey was at HSBC when the money laundering was going on. And, you know, to get your mind around this, everyone... You know, when you deal with massive amounts of terrorist money, which are financing terrorists, the Wahhabis out of Saudi Arabia, the Muslim Brotherhood of the Middle East, and we're passing money that the Muslim Brotherhood comes in and takes a receipt for in our consulate in Tripoli. We're paying the Muslim Brotherhood through the Obama administration, identified as terrorists in Egypt. When you see these massive amounts of money flows and also drugs in Mexico, it, it you know, Trillion dollars worth of hundred dollar bills doesn't do you any good. So the whole object is to get a compromised bank, a crooked bank, and HSBC paid one point nine billion dollar fine. And that's why it's important is HSBC you're saying was then working with the globalists in the sellout of America. Yes. We blow them sky high, we've cut off their money. And I'm also saying that you don't launder money in this magnitude without the federal government knowing it. Without the Treasury knowing it, without the FDIC. Sure, so they have to have officers in charge for that executive level fraud to be able to pass it through. And, and you've got the President of the United States using a, uh, you know, an alias to communicate with Hillary Clinton over her secret server. You know, so you've got it entirely. You've got collusion. You've got the racketeering. And if it were investigated at the top level and we get the records where you could prosecute people like Al Capone, on their actual bank sure. records that weren't being laundered through Panama and Switzerland and through shell corporations, which is what the Clintons have done with the Clinton Foundation. Sure, classic, and you've exposed that. It's been exposed by others. It's confirmed. So let me ask you this question. How is it going for them? It seems like a lot of their systems are being rolled up globally. Our military and intelligence agencies more and more realize how much trouble we're in or exposing them. It seems like they're in full retreat, hoping to get her in and hoping then she can kind of set up some dictatorship to try to get out of all this. Well, I think the Clintons have, you know, thought from the beginning that they could fool the public one more time and weren't going to have the scrutiny that they're having. What's happening is we saw it in the Brexit vote. I think you're going to see it again in the uh, presidential vote for Trump. And that is the people are waking up and they're saying, you know, this new world order globalism means slavery for the average person. It means 90 million Americans who could work are useless. And I agree. Hillary literally has like 50 people at her events now over and over again every day. She's imploded. We, we, we sent hidden cameras into her campaign headquarters uh, in New York and in Ohio and in Florida. They go, no one's supporting her. Everyone we know is for Trump. 
it, so obviously these polls are all fake when they say Trump's neck and neck are losing. CNN does stuff like samples 46% Democrats to 22% Republicans. I mean, this is ridiculous. So also, yeah, they, what they do is they, they oversample because you see they're, they're using in many of these polls the turnout assumption numbers from 2012 or 2008. Well, Hillary Clinton's not going to get Barack Obama turnout. It's, you know, political scientists. That's my it's point. Everybody hates her. So she clearly yes. is probably 10 points ahead. What are they going to do to block a Trump landslide is the question, Dr. Corsi. Well, there's going to try. I mean, I think we've got to keep very close watching with this whole Russian. You know, Russia made it very clear, uh, saying directly to the Obama administration, keep hands off. And Russia will go to war if we do something like launch cruise missiles or to defend ISIS or we try to shoot down a Soviet, or I'm sorry, a Russian plane, we do any of this type of aggressive activity, Russia will step it up. Now, if that's what Obama wants, that's the American people aren't there. And we need to expose in advance that if this is what the Clintons are down to, I mean, besides, Hillary is massively sick. I mean, the, the indications that she's having epileptic-like seizures and having, you know, being propped up with medications and you know, medicated so that she gets through an hour and a half long debate, you know, coughing constantly, t suppressing the And cough. isn't her collapse emblematic of the old Bush slash Clinton facade collapsing? I mean, we need to not let these people fail forward into a larger war. Uh, I mean, I think it's safe to say, Dr. Corsi, the world has never been in a more dangerous position. Well, I don't think the, I don't think the American people are ready to go into another, you know, Iraq war that was, you know, trumped up. And was basically, but you know, Trump opposed it. He did oppose it, and you know, this whole idea that Trump was for the war because of a comment he made. We on, have all the videos, and you know, we have six the, videos of him opposing it in 2004. Yes. Two of them in 2013. And I, mean, the, I mean, I mean, 2003. What the Clintons are doing is they're playing a game of gotcha, and so are the journalists. They're trying to take out of context anything that that you know have any issue that they can with Trump to make that. You know, the three or four day news cycle. Sure, sure, exactly. I mean, distractions as Trump says, let me ask you this as a real expert. I mean, as a real expert, folks, we're talking to a politically dealing with this. What about just reaching out to liberals and going, do you really want World War Three? Do you really want insanity? I mean, come on, you know you're lying. You know you're just betting on this horse. For common decency, don't destroy us. Well, and, you know, this is where the, the final contradictions the liberals are in. If their only solution to having Hillary a losing candidate, a sick candidate, a lying candidate, uh, one who nobody likes, it, even her you know, supporters don't have any enthusiasm for her. The only alternative is to go to war, and this is what Obama and Hillary are supposedly against for their entire you know, administration. And by the way, we're not hyping that. We have the head of the army, we have the Joint Chiefs saying, we've been asked to go to war with Russia, trying to cause a debate. We're at red level crazy town right now. And, and the idea of going to war over Syria, the American people, after Iraq, after Afghanistan, after the complete disorder. Oh, yeah, we can't beat the Afghans. Now let's fight the Russians. I mean, you know, let's, in this idea of we're going to fight a perpetual war in the Middle East is not what the American people signed up for after 9-11. A limited campaign to get al-Qaeda, who was blamed for this. Okay, fine. Hunt, uh, you know, Osama bin Laden down in Afghanistan. But now... But what now, do we do don't we have to stay in Iraq because because uh, ISIS has taken over? Yeah, and ISIS has actually taken over Iraq, and and now you've got a massive. I'm ready to invade right now to kick ISIS back to Saudi Arabia and take their amount. I want to come back and ask you in a perfect world, what should Trump do if he gets elected? Because you know that's the big issue. They're going to counter strike, or what happens? God forbid, if Hillary gets in. We only got six minutes left with him on the other side. WND.com is where you see the exclusive videos of stuff I can't even describe on air. They're there right now. WND.com. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. By the way, Dr. Jerome Corsi is with us for a few more minutes. I didn't even mention he has a new book out. A three-time New York Times bestseller uh, in, in you know political books. And, and now, Good Night Obama, Good Night Moon is one of my kids' favorite books that are little. And it deals with uh, his incredible corruption. Maybe liberals at their, at their, at their so-called intellectual level can understand this. Uh, the New York Times number one bestselling author, Jerome Corsi, Good Night Obama. And it's a hilarious book, also pretty scary. But maybe this is something Americans that don't read books anymore or think that books existing are a conspiracy theory. Maybe this is something they'll actually read. Let's talk about the book. And then I want to ask you about election fraud. First, they said it didn't exist when I brought it up and Trump brought it up. When I asked Trump to bring it up, he did two days later. And then they said, it. oh, but we're coming in to federalize the elections. Let's talk about that. But first, good night, Obama, the new book by Dr. Corsi.
And uh, it's uh, written really as a parody, and thank you, uh, Alex. It's, um, it points out the various things that Obama's done that uh, are, will disturb conservatives like myself, increasing taxes, um, you know, the, all the way through the uh, endorsing the Muslim Brotherhood. You'll see the Muslim moon on the cover. You know, it's basically a parody. Uh, good night, Obama, and good riddance. And I've got on YouTube and on my Twitter, you'll see the... Um, I, I actually read this as a, you know, children's good night book, uh, but I, it, the, the drawings are meant to uh, add some humor to it. But underlying message here is look at all the things that you know, Obama has done in this fundamental transformation of America that has sided with, you know, radical Islams, destabilized the Middle East, doubled our national debt. I mean, it goes on to saying uh, good night, Obama. And that's hopefully we're, you know, we're done with this uh, brand of, you know, brand of anti-American socialism. And hopefully people begin to really wake up and not be so completely, especially the millennials, to understand that they're considered by Hillary Clinton to be the basement dwellers. And by the they're way, I got the book a few days ago and Nico wouldn't let me take it because we did it for the show, but I was gonna take it home. I'm not just saying this, Th this book is perfect for trendies, perfect for liberals because it really illustrates what a giant fraud all this is, but it's also great for kids, but it's great for adults, a real stroke of genius. Well, thank you. I think it's gonna be a good Christmas gift. I think as we actually get closer to realizing that Obama's gone, you know, there's his crocodile tears for guns, you know, which he does all the time, and the Eternal Revenue Service going after the GOP, uh, tearing down the wall, yes, right. He, of course, the wall Obama wants to tear down is the border. Uh, letting in, you know, here's the Constitution and disregard for it and executive orders. Uh, the, you know, the book shows here he's coming off Air Force One with his disrespectful attitude towards the military. The only yeah. problem is there should be a coffee cup in his hand, yeah. But yeah, really. And, you know, go ahead, Iran, you can have nuclear weapons. And, you know, the, the dream of hope and change turns into the typical socialist nightmare of, you know, dead imprisonment. But, of course... You can go on to the talk shows and make laugh, laugh about it all. And, you know, the here's your clinging to the guns in the Bible. And, uh, of course, Obama does not understand traditional American values. Or the, here's the birth certificate. There's the guy who forged the birth certificate. Well, that all these wars were fought over the Second Amendment. And he just didn't get it. Yeah. And, you know, the, the fact that we've, under the Obama administration, been in a perpetual war in the Middle East and destabilizing the Middle East. You know, we've, we've been here the movie that was blamed for Benghazi when Hillary can't even remember that four Americans were killed at Benghazi. He said, who was killed there? I mean, Hillary's, you know, mental brain damage, I think is, is and she refuses to submit to neurological examination. People climbing into the White House, which has been climbing over the fence and under the fence. I mean, the Obama administration and LGBT, and of course, you know, I like you, Alex, I'm a libertarian, but the point is, Point you is, they're force feeding kids this garbage, and they shouldn't be doing it. You said you could do five more. I want to come back. Then we talked about the book, Good Night, Obama, which I want to cover and, and, and carry in our bookstore, InfoWarsStore.com. So please hook me up uh, with your uh, publisher yeah. that's Post yeah. Hill. Uh, but an absolute yeah. stocking stuffer. We're going to come back in 70 seconds with five more minutes. Election fraud. What will Hillary get to do if she gets in? Versus what will Trump face if he does get in? Because the battle just begins, as Michael Savage said here a few weeks ago. We'll be back. Third hour straight ahead. Then Paul Watson. All right, we got five minutes left with Dr. Jerome Corsi at WND.com. His new book, Good Night Obama, is powerful. <laughs> Especially when you read the book to your kids a thousand times, literally, and three kids, and then um, it turned into a satire. It's, it's powerful. Because you, you think of all the crimes they've committed and what they've done, and you kind of review it in a children's book in like 30 pages, and it's like, wow, these people really are going out of their way. They really do hate America. It's like they run it. They captured it. It's like if I had some enemy that owned a hotel and then I got the hotel via a bank deal or whatever or, or default, I wouldn't then blow the hotel up to piss on who had it before. It's like it's real chicken, chicken, you know what behavior. It's real trashy, real weird, unsophisticated. Then I ask, how are we conquered by these folks? So they're talking about election fraud. They got to have the feds come in, the U.N. come in. Uh, the EU come in and monitor it, but Trump's crazy. There's election fraud. Talk about that for one minute, and then what happens if Hillary gets in? What happens if Trump gets in? Dr. Jerome Corsi. Well, the election fraud is a real problem. I mean, we're finding reports almost every day of illegal immigrants who are, are registered to vote. Of course, this has been a major strategy. Dead people. Yeah, and, and, you know, dead people voting and 
And now we're going to have the UN come in and monitor our elections. We don't need any international authorities to monitor our elections. What we need is an honest election boards, and we need to pass laws where people, you know, you can't put your kid in school without, you know, proving who you are and where you live. Well, why can't we have voting registration that's dependent upon IDs? You know, this whole Democratic Party idea that the only way they can win is by cheating and stealing. You know, Trump is going to have to win by a substantial margin. He's going to have to win by an eight to ten point margin. I agree. Because we got to have a landslide for a win. But hypothetically, if she gets in, what happens? She admits she's going after the alt media. That's you and I. Uh, what else happens? Well, if, if Hillary gets in, you can forget about the First Amendment because uh, anybody who opposes the this totalitarian leftist agenda will be accused of hate speech. Uh, you can forget about the Second Amendment. She'll do away with the Second Amendment. Uh, she's made that clear. Uh, you know, the expansion of the federal government, the powers, more debt, more government programs, more dependency on government, and inevitably more wars. Because the only way that the Hillary Clinton can sustain what she wants to do in her power grab will be by going to That's war. That's right. She doesn't want to just piss on America, but Russia and everybody else. Absolutely. She'll go to war and, you know, solve and get paid more by the uh, multinational corporations who will provide the war materiel. This is, you know, the, the strategy of scaring people into I don't get world. these hyper-dominant psychos that just won't work with people. Why do these crazy liberals have to control the language, what everybody does, other governments? They seem like megalomaniacs, Dr. Corsi. Well, they're totally opposed to what our, you know, the fundamental principle of our founding fathers, which had confidence that the average person would be best to rule themselves and that we should have dissent because argument is the best way of reaching truth. Uh, the left doesn't believe in any of this. The left has an agenda, and that agenda is very much like a Marxist agenda. What you know, it's unfortunate is so many of the millennials, the kids in schools, don't realize that they're the useful idiots to believe this nonsense. I agree, and but a lot of them are going against Hillary. That's exciting. In one minute left. It is, it is and, they, and they shouldn't be conditioned to expect free, 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 because it's not free. And the point is, you know, that the... The, the enslavement that comes from believing this leftist agenda turns immediately on those who have put them in power. This is about elitism. This is about an uh, elite banking, you know, warfare mentality where the Clintons and their associates, the Soroses, just get enormously rich. And I agree. It's a referendum on the Bushes, the Clintons, elitism, crony capitalism, and the future Trump. It couldn't be clearer. And no more Bushes, no more Clintons, no more elites, no more establishment. Back to that America where it's what you produce and what you do. Back to the fundamental principles of our country, which is First Amendment, Second Amendment, all the other... That amendments. Alexander de Tocqueville wrote about. It precisely. And the realization that, you know, if Hillary Clinton wasn't on the lying agenda, we wouldn't see tactics like are being rolled out with Kane interrupting constantly. I agree. Please come back soon. WND.com. Get the new book. Goodbye to Obama. Great job, Dr. Corsi. Thank you so much. You're a godsend. My, my great pleasure. Thank you.